What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be looking at NFL Network's three round mock draft. Now I usually like to continue these but a fourth round will be absolutely tedious. I want to be able to dig deep into this because you guys have been asking for two and three round mocks and uh, for me to look at and you know what? I typed in 2023 NFL mock draft. This came up. I have not seen many people look over it so I want to be able to get my own insight on it. Of course if you guys do love draft content I make it almost every single day. So feel free to check that out. I'm doing seven round mock drafts right now in draft order. So yeah, Seahawks just dropped yesterday along with the Colts. Feel free to check those out because it's always good to see what you guys think about it as well. It helps me make the mock drafts better for you guys. So again, please feel free to go check those out. And then again, don't be a dick about it, but I always love to get the feedback so that the content I produce for you is a lot better. So let's get right into this. Uh, no need to waste any more time. So apparently there. Oh, yeah, he got round one, round two, round three, whatever, boo. I thought he might have came out with something even newer. However, starting off with the number one overall pick, we have Bryce Young projected trade with the Chicago Bears. Um, I mean, if you trade up one spot, I just hope you don't end up giving up a shit ton of picks. I have a weird feeling he ended up giving up 12 as well. I personally wouldn't do that. If I'm the Texans, I'll sit at two and see what team is willing to literally leverage their entire franchise to be able to move up for Bryce, CJ, or Will. And then I think I'd be pretty happy with whatever is left over or going a defensive player or trading back and getting even more future capital. I don't think D'Amico Rides needs to ruin his potential chances of being able to totally revamp this team from worst to first. So uh, pick number two. The Colts going C.J. Stroud projected with the Bears. So Bears did the uh, double trade back. It's the best case scenario for the Bears, in my opinion. If you could end up being able to pull off that double trade, I, I think that'd be pretty damn awesome. Uh, I'm I'm not going to spend time reading the whole paragraph. You guys can do that. I'm doing a live reaction as well. Have not looked at this because I'm not continuing the mock draft, so I don't have to load it up. So you guys are watching this live with me. Uh, Cardinals going Jalen Carter. I think that's great. I love that uh, edge class super deep. You don't really need to address that too soon. Uh, Bears moved back twice and still got Will Anderson. That is a A plus move by Chicago. Don't think it's going to happen, but hey, one can dream, right? Uh, pick number five, Carolina moves up with Seattle to select Will Levis. I personally am not a fan of that. You know, I think Seattle will be happy going Will Levis because of the fact that Geno is just like, you know, he's getting old. So uh, he's just not somebody who has that much tread on the tires. He doesn't have as high of a ceiling as someone like Will Levis. And a lot, there's a lot of hate for Will out there. But honestly, there's a lot of really good tape too. You guys get to see my board here as well. I have Will Levis at 20, so he is my QB3. But you got AR um, pretty close behind there at 21. So it's a top four. That's a thing. And Panthers, I know you're going to be able to do well with Frank Reich. You have one hell of a coaching staff. I maybe would take a shot in AR. Uh, but, I mean, it really depends on... So this year and next. So this is actually ideal for Seattle if they don't want to take a QB. Because I think with Will, it might be tough to get the most out of him year one. So I personally wouldn't advise that trade. But, you know, it is what it is. Lions going Christian Gonzalez. I think that's an absolute awful pick. Not because Christian Gonzalez is a bad player, but when we're looking at this class, the deepest position, in my opinion, is the cornerback class. And I've been reevaluating all the corners. I pray to God that there's some Garrett Williams and Tyreek Stevenson tape that comes out this year for all 22. But barring those guys, we've had an incredible, incredible group here. And like, it's not a big surprise to me that, you know, you're seeing these corners fall to round two who should be going in the top 15 of a lot of drafts. And like you look at guys, even like Jalen Jones, he'll probably be there at the end of the second. I've had him as a top 20 player. I had him as a top 10 player for a long time, but still a phenomenal player nonetheless. And you can get that way later. You don't need to spend a top 10 pick on a corner. I think that's a total waste of a pick. Uh, and I'm being a little bit harsh here just because, I mean, I, I really have to hammer it in. Christian Gonzalez has a lot of work to do. Uh, you look at how he played versus Michael Wilson, Stanford wide receiver, and, you know, he looked like the worst player in that matchup. And Michael Wilson, to me, is an early third to late third type of player. So for Christian Gonzalez to be beat like that, certainly not someone who reflects as a top 10 pick, but has the upside if you can grab him there at that pick 18. 
Paris Johnson to the Raiders. I mean, it makes sense. You know, he's played on the right side of the offensive line. Never right tackle, though. So, obviously, I pray to God you're taking him as a right tackle to replace Thayer Mumford. Um, so, I mean, it wouldn't really make sense to take over for Colton Miller. I would probably wait for another round, maybe, to go after someone who's more astute at right tackle or end up moving back to select another right tackle. Doesn't feel like the right value for Paris Johnson uh, or the right fit there on the Raiders. Falcons going Miles Murphy. I would personally go Tyreek or Tyreek Tyree Wilson, but I mean I have Miles Murphy higher. I just think Tyree is going to be a better day one run defender with longer arms, so he has more upside. Uh, but you really can't go wrong. That's still an A plus pick. Seattle still getting Tyree Wilson, regardless of how it felt. That would be an amazing, amazing pick. Uh, oh, come on, man! Y'all get paid for this. So Bijan is going here at pick 10. Um, it is possible, but dude, this is a stacked uh, running back free agency class, and it's a really stacked running back room in terms of the draft. There is zero reason to go after Bijan, and I don't think Bijan would be the reason why the Eagles would win the Super Bowl. You need to get DBs like pretty desperately. Um, you know, we're losing Bradbury. You're going to probably be losing Slay eventually. He's not even that good, in my opinion. Chauncey's probably gone. So that, to me, is the biggest weakness. You could look at an edge rusher because besides Reddick, who's more of a stand-up linebacker, your backup edge rusher is BG, and you kind of want something more than that as your contingency plan. Uh, and then Sweat is there until 2024. But Bijan, just not the right value. And I like Bijan a lot. You guys get to see on my board, he's number 19. It's not that the value is bad, it's the fit. Like, this team has a lot bigger holes with some really good players on the board. So, it's not, like, this is a luxury pick. The Eagles don't have luxury at the moment, so I don't like that at all. Uh, Don can't, oh, come on, man. Okay, so let's just be frank here. This tight end class is really good in the first two rounds. You can wait to round two and get somebody of Dalton Kincaid's talent level. You can wait till round three and get Josh Wiley. This team also has Chick Okonkwo, who's going to be a pretty damn awesome tight end. There's no reason in hell. Like, this is going to be a long video. Dalton Kincaid, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's good offensive linemen on the board. There's even better receivers and, in my opinion, better tight ends on the board. There's just better everything on the board. There's AR on the board. They're trying to make a move up to one. So there is quarterback as an option here. Just come on, man. Come on. Texas going Kalija. I can't see it happening, but, you know, I would honestly trust um, D'Amico to be able to make Kalija work. He might be under six foot, though. That's a little bit of a concern. The Jets going AR. Would love to see another inaccurate high uh, high arm strength quarterback go to the Jets who needs a couple years to develop. Just doesn't make sense to me. If I'm the Jets there, I'm going to try to find a team that's paying a lot of money for a move up. I would look at Tampa Bay, especially as a team that might want to take a shot on that. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, there's been much worse picks than that because, you know, quarterback is technically a need. Broderick Jones makes sense for the Patriots. Jack Smith and Jigba uh, injury. Like injury last year kind of put him out. In my opinion, he was the third best of this group. I mean, obviously, Jameson Williams was, you know, he was there and then transferred to Bama and became a superstar. But, you know, I didn't think that he was the best receiver on his team this year by any stretch of the imagination before he got hurt. I thought he was the third best behind Abuka and Marvin Harrison. I thought he was the third best behind Wilson and Olave. So, I mean, he's not that physically talented. I like him actually a lot more than some other people. That's a weird thing. I'm like giving him criticism because his fans are just absolutely insane. And I'm an Ohio State fan. I have a reason to be biased. But Jack Smith and Jigba just, he's going to be running like a 4 5, maybe a 4 6. He got caught by someone who's running 4 5 3 from behind. So naturally, you think he might be slower. Uh, hopefully he's been able to get back from that injury and maybe he's trained himself to be even more athletic. That then would be more of a reason to take him if you're Green Bay. Uh, Commander's going Peter Skaronsky. I love that pick myself. Mm -mm, don't do that to my Steelers. Oh, so Lucas Van Ness is a one trick pony. He is speed to power and he does not have bend. In my opinion, he does not have bend. 
He literally is, I will run into you. He is Frank Clark, but much more raw. That's not worth the top 17 pick. That's just my opinion. I don't think the Steelers need an edge rusher either at this moment. You have guys like Joey Porter Jr., whose father played for the damn team on the board, and you don't take him. Oh, no. Oh, is this an April Fool's mock? It has to be. It has to be. Michael married to the Lions. You got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm debating even canceling this video right now. This is this is embarrassing. Buccaneers Brian Branch. I mean, he's a he's a damn good player. I guess it's worth taking. I do I have to explain why this is just an a in oh, no, I'm not going to. Uh Bills moved up for Jordan Addison. I don't think that's awful because I do think you could put him in that Cole Beasley role and it'd be actually quite a nice pairing. Um, Joey Porter Jr. for the Chargers. I mean, that'd be one hell of a corner room. I don't know if he fits what the Chargers are looking for, but you know, he's a I mean, he's my number two player in the class. Devon Witherspoon here at 22. He'll probably go higher. Um, hopefully, again, there's only one game out of all 22 for him. I've watched the rest on normal game tape, which to me, I'm never going to make my opinion on normal game tape, but Devon Witherspoon on the tape that I saw did not look nearly as fast as what a lot of people are saying. So I have him graded here at 25th overall, which is still incredible. He's still really good corner. Just, I would say like halt, like just let's relax a little bit on him being like a top five pick even though I take him in the top seven, but that's mainly for schematic fit as well as chemistry. But Devon Witherspoon to the Giants would be incredible, even though you guys traded up to get him. But I do think the Vikings would have snagged him. Keon White in the first, no. No, he's 24 years old and was not really that dominant, even though I do like Keon White. I uh, don't think that's a great pick. Cam Smith to the Jaguars, I've done that myself, but I think a lot of people are starting to get much lower on Cam Smith. And I've always had him low, and I just artificially boosted him because no all 22. Um, but man, the more I watched him, the more I was actually concerned this guy's going to run a 4-5 or a 4-6. Jalen Hyatt to the Ravens. I, I I, mean, it wouldn't be awful, but I don't think your offense is built on, you know, just getting those chunk plays. I would love to get a receiver. I mean, you're still seeing Quentin Johnston on the board. We're not even bringing up that. But Quentin Johnston, for example, would be an amazing player because he has that size. And he's somebody that you can work in the short as well as a long range. Jalen Hyatt is similar to Lucas Van Ness, very much a one-trick pony. Even though I have Jalen Hyatt higher, it's still somebody where, like, he's a good compliment to Rashad, but Rashad's not always healthy. And I want someone who's bigger because that's what's worked with Lamar. I don't want to be drafting somebody where we trade away Marquise because he wasn't at his full potential with Lamar. Just doesn't make sense. Cowboys, Trent Simpson, there's boundary corners available. There's, I mean, there's an offensive lineman available. There's no reason in hell that you should be going after a linebacker if that's the case. Seahawks moved back and get Osiris Torrance. I've done that myself with that move. Bengals getting Cody Malk. I would look at someone like Darnell Wright to be the tackle for this team. I am never going to shame a team for going offensive line, even if they don't need it, just because offensive line rotates a lot um, in terms of the injuries as well as just the inconsistency year to year. But, I mean... I think there's just much better players than Malk. Tuli Tuapalotu. Uh, I've been, I actually am watching him right after this. I started watching him a little bit last night. At 290, man, he does have some crazy bends. So uh, he's going to be probably one of those big risers for me. No, no, stop. You have to be kidding me. No. Oh my God. No. 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 Oh my God. So this is it. This is it. We have to do two more rounds of this shit. <laughs> mm. Let's just say, again, no disrespect to Ronnie Hickman as a person, but as a player, there's no way in hell he should be remotely worth a first round pick. And I may be proven wrong, but is this man getting paid? By Ronnie Hickman and Raw's agent. Again, I go to SMU. I know Raw. He ain't even close to 31 on my board. Not even close. And I want to be biased as hell. I want him to get all the money he can get. If he gets drafted here, awesome. What in the hell? This is after the Senior Bowl. It's not even like, oh, this is pre-Senior Bowl hype. Like, this is Senior Bowl, guys. Wow. This is awful. Oh. 
Don't even get me started on Siaki. I know y'all like him. I'm, I just do not like Siaki at all. It does make sense for the Steelers because we need a run stuffing interior guy, but you know, pick that up at 7 11, not in the second round. Luke Musgrave for the Texans makes sense. Two tight ends up for a contract, and um, he is a really, really, really solid tight end in terms of athleticism. Obviously, D'Amico is used to having a really solid tight end there with Kittle there in San Francisco. Cardinals getting Dewan Jones. It doesn't seem to make sense with a more mobile quarterback, but you know, I'm sure Gannon's been hanging out with Stoutland enough to where he sees the potential. Would not be too surprised. I'd rather have gone Darnell Wright, but it is what it is. Uh, the Rams going Nolan Smith. I think that's perfectly fine. Makes sense. Seahawks, Tyreek Stevenson. I don't think they go DB that high. They have uh, solid enough starting two, but you know, who am I to say anything? This, um, this draft's been atrocious. Jameer get, <laughs> uh, yeah, that totally makes sense because, um, Josh McDaniels totally uses running back like Jameer Gibbs in the first place. Not to mention that you probably are having Josh Jacobs for another year who said he'd play on that contract. So yeah, let's spend our second round pick on him. I like it. I don't like it. Uh, Panthers going Darnell Washington. That's fine. I don't mind that. Zay Flowers is a stud pick for the Saints. I would see them doing that in the first round. Will McDonald for the Titans. Don't know if they go edge rusher that high, but Will McDonald is not a bad player at all. Mozzie Smith for the Browns. I did that myself. John Michael Schmitz for the Jets. I don't know if interior offensive line is necessarily the biggest need, but you know it is a really good player nonetheless. Boutte for the Falcons, as long as his personality issues are aside, he's a good player. Antonio Johnson somehow went below Ronnie Hickman, but, you know, I've seen the NFL do stupid stuff, and that's probably why he works for them. Um, pick number four. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Manuel Forbes to the Commanders, uh, great pick. I'd do that in the first. No Sewell to the Lions makes sense. He already have another Sewell on the team and need a linebacker. Anton for the Steelers is a dream. I'd probably take him the first for the Steelers. Uh, Clark Phillips for the Buccaneers taking two DBs, but both of them are slot corners. So obviously you can see the football IQ on this drafter. Uh, Henry Teotio. Somebody has not watched football at all. Somebody just literally went to a simulator and he didn't update it from like the start of the year. Uh, Jalen... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, you know what? Let's have fun with this. It's I mean, Let's have some fun. Brian Breezy here. The, I mean, I don't even like Brian Breezy. I don't even like I'll scroll down so you guys can see a little bit more of my board. I, I have him lower than this overall on my board, but in the right situation, I'm more than fine taking him in the first. Uh, Zach Charbonnet just watched him again today. Obviously, my teammate in high school. Uh, he's moved up my board to RB6. He's a really good player. I think he'd be a good fit for the Lions. Uh, Tucker Craft should not be a tight. He should not be a second rounder for the Jaguars. There's better tight ends in my opinion, but you know it does make sense to go after a tight end if you're Doug Peterson. Tyler Scott, man, I'm still waiting on some all 22 on this guy, so I'm gonna reserve my opinion for then. But you know I don't. Oh, stop. No. Oh, come on. Marvin Mims didn't even do anything this year. He's getting a second round pick from the Cowboys. I just don't get this, guys. I don't. I don't. Uh, Steve Avila for the Bills. So, I mean, it, it's okay. I don't think that's a bad pick. Bengals getting Deontay Banks. I think he's more of a man corner, if I'm not mistaken. Very, very athletic. BJ Ojolari is an absolute freak of nature, top 10 player. Keely Ringo for the Eagles. I mean, if you switch this into Ronnie Hickman's pick, it'd make a little bit more sense. Uh, Jamie Robinson there for the Chiefs. You know, it is what it is. Jamie Byron, yeah. <laughs> I'm just not even going to address that. Uh, Felix is a top 15 player for me. I like Felix a lot. Cedric Tillman's a nice boundary receiver, especially if you don't have DeAndre. But I'd probably move back to get him. Not a bad pick, nonetheless. Uh, Voorhees for the Broncos and Drew Sanders are both really good picks, mainly because they should have been taken earlier. Jalen Skinner for the Rams. Don't know what role he's going to necessarily play, but might be BPA. Derek Hall for the Raiders, not bad. Ty J Spears, don't think you need to spend a luxury pick like this on a running back. This is a really deep class again, but Ty J is a good player. Um, Nick Broker for the Titans, at least you're going O-line finally, rather than, you know, just completely blowing a pick on a tight end. 
Luke Whipler for the Bears. That would be a dream pick, even though I don't necessarily think offensive line on the interior is the biggest issue. I'd probably try to address right tackle. Um, Dion Henley, just not really surprising. Um, he didn't really wow me at all. Matt Bergeron for the Falcons, not a bad pick. Riley Moss for the Patriots feels like a Patriots pick. Just he's going to end up being a five star dude. Andre Carter should not be falling this far. He fell this far in my mock draft, but he shouldn't. Just to be honest, he he has so much upside. But you know, having him here with Big Fangio would be awesome. Laporta for the Packers. Uh, I mean, hey, that's the dream, man. That's the dream. Uh, Mike Morris for the Colts. I haven't done a study on him. I'm gonna be honest. So we'll see. You have to be kidding me. I like Roshan Johnson a lot. There ain't no way in hell he should be going to the Steelers for one. Ain't no way in hell that the Steelers should be spending a pick on a running back this high, number two. And number three, ain't no way in hell he's going to go this high. He wasn't even a starting running back, and we have a lot of top-tier starting running backs who um, are still on the board. Tanner McKee to the Lions, you know, whatever. It's a scheme fit. Carl Brooks didn't get invited to the Senior Bowl, so probably this guy was the one who um, didn't invite him or something. He's a good player. I like that fit. Jack Campbell to the Seahawks should be going way higher than Dion Henley. Uh, Blake Freeland for the Dolphins, not awful, but I'd want someone who's more consistent as a right tackle. And um, he, in his very limited reps at the Senior Bowl, looked like an absolute fish out of water. McClendon should not be drafted or maybe a round six type of guy, so... You know, I don't think the Chargers should do that. Foskey feels like a Ravens pick. Um, Caillou Blue Kelly for the Vikings. Don't blame him at all. Um, But I just would probably try to move down before I drafted him. Jordan Battle for the Jaguars. Eh. Eh. Um, Pittman's a bum, but I also know that a lot of people are high on Joe Tittman. You know, Seam Richards, I haven't seen enough of him, but I'm going to be honest, North Carolina offensive linemen have been absolutely feasted on this entire year. I don't think Seam Richards is going to necessarily curve that uh, reputation. Keanu Benton should be a second. This, again, was after the Senior Bowl, so somebody didn't watch the Senior Bowl. Daniel Scott, I don't, there's no way that I would think they'd go that high, but I do think safety is a potential need. I mean, I'm just not going to address it. Sean Tucker is a good pick there for the Panthers. Zach Harrison, not bad for the Eagles. Jaden Reed adding more speed there for Kansas City. Garrett Williams is an amazing pickup, and I do think he could be there if he doesn't check out medically. Uh, Owen Papo is an absolute bum. So, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, if you don't like the Commanders, then I guess you'll like that pick. Michael Wilson, this is probably the range which I would be super comfortable taking him. I'd probably be willing to at the start of the second. KJ Henry, he's a high producer with short arms. Don't think that's going to fit San Fran. Uh, Kenny McIntosh feels like something the Ravens could do. So don't mind that. Darius Rush, not bad. Nick Salvadari, not bad either. Um, I'm confused as to where the other uh, compensatory pick would be from uh, at 103 from the Chiefs that was sent to the uh, New York Giants. But That's going to be the video, guys. I do apologize for the fact that this was absolutely awful. We will have, I mean, he's not even a Chad. He's just like bad. I don't know how to describe it. It's There's no way in hell this guy's watching college football based on these takes or maybe the NFL either. So I do apologize, but it does also point out the fact that you got to appreciate the content producers that actually put in the work. And I'm far from like... I'm far from like the only one who does it. So I got to give a shout out to those who actually do grind because we do see people like this getting paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to put out absolute dog shit. So it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me as always. See you on the far side. Peace.